This is a story about this remarkable and imperiled reptile, the gopher tortoise. But it's also about an ecosystem and what might seem like a counterintuitive approach to this species' conservation. But to explain this, I need to back up. All of this started when we were getting a tour of this longleaf pine forest, a great example of tortoise habitat, and the director said this. Our goal is to keep them off the list. Because if it's on a list, that's bad news. We want to keep things off the list and have healthy, thriving populations. In theory, if a species is listed under the Endangered Species Act, it's given federal protection, and efforts are made to save them and hopefully make their numbers grow. So while it makes sense that you would want thriving populations, some people think biologists would want them listed so they'd get a little support. But currently, the listing process for these tortoises is on hold, which is giving biologists time to work as a team, proactively, to ensure they no longer need listing. And more importantly, biologists are finding that saving these turtles may actually be easier if they aren't listed. But to understand the specifics of how this might work, Haley and I first had to take a deep dive into the biology of this tortoise and the ecosystem that it thrives in. I know what heartbreak feels like and that journey starts right here in one of the most pristine longleaf pine forests in the world. Given that gopher tortoises thrive in longleaf pine habitat, which once spread over 93 million acres, but has now been reduced to less than 5% of that range today, this seemed like a great place to start. We came here in particular to meet up with these two biologists, who are part of a larger team effort looking for good populations of gopher tortoises and good habitat for them to aid in their recovery. Our first goal was to find the burrow of a gopher tortoise. Fortunately, they knew of a great location here in this forest that was recently burned. Burning, I should add, that both gopher tortoises and longleaf pines thrive in. The next step, see if there's a gopher tortoise inside by using this high-tech camera attached to a long hose. Stuffing it down the hole gives us the ability to see if there is or is not a tortoise within. And this setup is because the camera has to reach a long way in, given the burrows can be up to 40 feet deep. I love doing this. It's a little bit like an Easter egg hunt. And you don't know what you might see. Could be a rattlesnake. Could be, hopefully, a gopher tortoise, but you never know. Oh, oh tortoise. Hey, tortoise. tortoise. Oh, look at all those crickets I see. Oh my goodness, look at that. In this case, we found one. This is a oh small-ish burrow, that. so that's a young tortoise, and you can still see the See the growth rings. That was fun. Oh, wow. No, he's, he's got a cricket around. on his butt. He's like, what bumped well, me? Well, I think what he's doing is trying to dig further in oh, and really? get away from us. But yeah. It turns out that these tortoises are architects of the environment, creating shelter and homes vital to the survival of many animals. There are actually 360 animals that share these burrows dug by the tortoises. So over the next few days, we joined in the hunt for some of the more showy critters. And we're filming them all today. It's so exciting. Including many of the snakes like the coach whip. Okay, great. The diamondback rattlesnake. The pine snake. They are currently state protected here in Georgia. The very cute hognose snake. And it is the cutest thing. Oh, wow. Endlessly entertaining. And the extremely rare indigo snake. What was profound is these researchers adored the other inhabitants of the burrows. Oh, this is so awesome. <laughs> this is my first time holding and seeing an indigo snake. And yeah. seeing. It's so rare. Truth is, many of them wouldn't be here at all if they couldn't use the gopher tortoise burrows. And the habitat available to the gopher tortoises is very rare. Much of what was viable habitat in the past now looks like this. Rolling agricultural fields. That's why the team is trying to find viable habitat and manage the land for gopher tortoises. And one of the main things they need to manage the land for is, surprisingly, fire. They're actually burning right in front of us on our path out of here. That's incredible. Fire is essentially what maintains this longleaf pine forest, and here they burn a lot. They're basically taking these uh, ATVs and driving around this little block and lighting the fires with a little drip torch off the side of the ATVs. 
this is the fire we're talking about that is needed all over this landscape. Although it may be hard to believe, this is how much of the U.S. was in the past. Lightning would ignite the undergrowth and burn for hundreds of miles. Native Americans also used fire. They'd burn often to make it easier to hunt, travel, and protect their homes. To keep and grow these forests, you need good, frequent fire. Here, they burn about 25,000 acres every two years. The fire-dependent plants here understandably need fire. They need this right here. And all of that greens up very fast. In fact, we found that even more evident, visiting sites one day, one month, and one year after a burn. It's really amazing how quickly it comes back and how fast it becomes the habitat that so many species depend on to live. But why the gopher tortoise needs the fire was a little less evident. If it's a forested habitat and you don't burn, it becomes shaded out by oaks. They need the sunlight. The sunlight promotes all the food plants in the ground. They bask to digest their food. It also, they lay their eggs in the entrance of the burrow or in other like open sandy patches and then that incubates their eggs. So in summary, the gopher tortoises need the exact conditions that fire gives to the longleaf pine forest, providing open habitat for the sun, for them to breed and grow the short grasses and herbs they need to feed on. In turn, they dig through the habitat, creating homes for hundreds of animals that can live here as the fire moves through. So the tortoise is essential to the diversity, and clearly fire is the one thing everybody kept coming back to. Prescribed fire plays a role it burns all the time, so just burn all the time. But simply, helping the gopher tortoise is all about getting more habitat for them and getting more fire back on the landscape, something that takes a lot of work. This is a landscape that needs a lot of work. It needs a lot of work. It needs a lot of fire. If fire has not been here, there's a lot of work you need to do to transition it from maybe a less than desirable state. The gopher tortoise does well if it has good habitat. And having good habitat is all about having good fire. And that, to me, is a surprising formula. So, yeah, it's a formula. That doesn't seem so hard. <laughs> it does not. Why is it so hard? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. Haley and I really were surprised at the survival of not only the gopher tortoise, but that thousands of species in the longleaf pine forest are dependent on having more good habitat with frequent fires. If you were surprised too by this, let us know in the comments below and share this with somebody who lives, well, right here where the longleafs used to be. It's a great conservation message and something everyone should hear.